What a, what a heat sink. That's fantastic, okay? Thanks for checking out the video. If you want to join these folks in supporting the channel, you can do that here on YouTube or on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Thanks so much for your help. Today we're looking at the Tascam DA88, and there's two things to keep in mind while we go through this and you see how this was put together. Number one is at one point in time in the 90s, this was the biggest product Tascam had ever made, the most successful product in their lineup ever. And that's because roughly between 1995 and 1999, they would sell 60,000 of these. And that's even more impressive to me now that I've taken this one all the way apart. It's unbelievably well built and incredibly modular, built to be repaired. And this is almost exactly the opposite of how most stuff is built today. If you're not familiar, these machines recorded using Hi8 tapes, which on the left here, you see one made by Quantigy and compare that to a DAT tape for a normal stereo DAT machine on the right. And at the time, this was an incredible cost savings over analog tape. And you could string a bunch of these together to get much higher channel counts. And the portability of the whole system at the time was an absolute game changer. Now the story with this specific machine is it was dropped a couple of times it looks like before it came to me. The rear heat sink is pushed in towards the power supply. Both rack rails are bent. It has a number of errors. And most importantly, the tape drive mechanism is filthy. Doesn't look like this machine saw a lot of maintenance. So compared to the other machines I have that are serviceable, this one has been in my collection for a number of years. It's not gonna get repaired. And the best thing to do is to salvage what I can from it at this point and get the rest of the metal off to recycling so it can be turned back into something useful. Oh, that's cool as shit that just came off all in one. With recycling in mind, if there's anything from this machine that you see and you could use or would like to have, drop me a message in the comments and we'll try to work something out and get you these parts because I'd rather them go into a new project or into a repair than just into my parts bins or into the recycling center. So leave me a message if there's anything from this that you would like. So you can start to see just how modular everything is. Peeling back the front panel and then the LCD display and now this board disconnecting it. I'm fairly certain with the remote that I have for this unit, you could plug this back in and use it as a black box front uh, recorder without any of this. Everything that you're looking at here seems to be to do with just the control panel and everything else functionally with the machine is inside on its own board. It's just really, really well done. If you had any problem with any of these parts, so much is socketed, all of the cabling is on disconnects, and I can imagine that this would have been a pleasure to work on in its day compared to a lot of less uh, well put together equipment. Look oh, look at the gunk. It does seem like someone has been inside this machine before. Some of the screws are very loose. They all seem original. There's nothing mismatched or weird. It just seems like maybe this was serviced in the past by a technician. Yeah, they don't build anything out of metal that thick anymore. Uh, maybe just regular servicing. Who knows what the actual history of this machine was. But you can see I'm just peeling back the layers, basically. I don't have a service manual or any specific order I'm going in, but knowing nothing about how this was put together, it's fairly easy to see a logical uh, path to taking it all the way apart. And if you were making a repair, I don't think you'd have any trouble whatsoever putting this all back together just by following the same kind of logical steps. Although you'd want to keep much better track of the screws than I'm doing here, of course. Damn, that's a... 
Smells like an old boat. Oh man, the grunge. The grunge. It's so dirty. Glad I wasn't playing tapes with this one. But... Mounted on its own entire board that sandwiches into there. So and this is about the only place that there's any dead space inside these units. And that's underneath the tape drive behind the front control panels for the transport controls. And the rest of the machine is divided up pretty logically. On the left-hand side here is all power supply and everything else processing wise is on the right. Now tell me what you think of this. Every component, it seems, in these has its own metal tray. It's like a custom mounting tray for every little thing. I don't know if I've ever seen another product with a cage like this around a simple fan. This is not an expensive, crazy fan. It's a Panasonic 12 volt fan. Uh, but look at the cage they've put around it just to mount it. Um, incredible. I'd love to know what you think if that was necessary. I'm sure they had some real justifications at the time because it could not have been cheap even in 1990s money to build a product like this. This thing is just absolutely built like a tank. What a, what a heat sink. That's fantastic, right? So that's the power side completely disassembled and this transformer could come in handy in the future for something. It's nicely labeled and laid out uh, and really easy to repurpose since I've got all the correct uh, wires. So really neat and that is uh, out of the way for now and we're on to the other side of the unit. All right, I think at this point we can kick it up. Oops. And just like take everything out of the bottom. Of 
course it is. Yes. What a beast this thing is. This is just incredibly cool. For anybody that wants a better look at these, dcsoundup.com forward slash DA88, and you'll get the high res images there so you can dig into exactly what's going on on these different boards. Without digging into any real detail though, you can see that each function of the machine has its own board basically, and each one of those boards can be pulled out for repair or swapped out in the event of failure. So you could imagine in a studio setting, if one of many machines went down, you'd be able to have parts on the shelf to repair that quickly, maybe a few hours to pull one of these apart, put a new board in and get going again. I'm sure a skilled technician from the day could do it much quicker than that even. This top board allows you to connect the remote control that was optional and also handled the sync inputs and outputs as well as the punch in foot switch input. This next unit allowed you to connect the optional meter bridge, another expensive cable and optional extra, as well as being the only place where digital audio can be connected to this machine on a TIDF connector. We'll see a lot of real estate dedicated in just a few moments to the digital to analog and analog to digital conversion in this unit, but if you're connecting digital audio, stuff that's already in the digital domain, this is the card that's going to be doing that for you. This next board handles all of the integration that you might want to do with video or other systems telling this machine when to start and stop. So you can put this machine into chase mode. You can do a number of different things that would integrate it into a professional video environment of the day. And that really was a big help for anybody doing sound for film at the time. These were wildly popular because they were so simple, albeit expensive and quite complicated by today's standards, but they were very simple uh, at the time to integrate into an otherwise professional video editing system. And finally, we come down to the input card, the analog to digital conversion. It takes unbalanced RCA jacks or balanced on a DB25 uh, connector there. And then you can see there's a double set, an A and a B input for each channel. And one of those is the balanced, the other is the unbalanced. And just so everybody's clear, there is no mic pre involved here. These are expecting line level signal from a mixing board. Often that would be the direct outputs from individual channels, or it could be from a mix bus that you'd be sending uh, to a channel on this to record. So you're getting line level signal into these. You are expected to bring your own microphone preamplifiers to the party. And finally, we have the digital to analog output board. Again, we see those outputs mirrored A and B for balanced and unbalanced. And a typical way you would have one of these machines set up in a studio would be for the outputs to be connected back up to the channel's B input or alternate input. So that way, when you wanna play back, you flip the channel from the mic pre input into playback mode. So you're getting the signal back from the tape deck uh, depending on the console you're using, there was always different uh, nomenclature for those returns, but essentially you would have this connected back up to the same console that's feeding it so you could listen to the tracks and then record on adjacent tracks and make a multi-track recording. So I hope this has been educational to see how one of these machines goes together and just generally how machines of that era were built and what the technology to record eight tracks of digital audio looked like. Remember, this is only eight tracks in this one machine. You could connect multiple machines together, but all this did was eight tracks and you had to buy tapes to make it do it. There's no hard drives involved. Uh, so it's an interesting look back at something that was not that long ago and is a direct uh, predecessor of what we do today. 
As far as a salvage effort, is it worth it to pull these apart? Uh, probably not, honestly. Right now, it's a Friday, it's a week before Christmas. I would not put this on my list of things to do when I was busy, and it's certainly not gonna be a money-making venture. Most of the components inside of these are probably obsolete for any professional use. But like I said before, if there's anything in here that you think you could use or put to use in a future project, give me a shout. We'll try to work something out if the shipping is possible, depending on where you're located and which part you're after. Thanks so much for watching though. This has been a lot of fun.